Mexico City is listed as a level two warning to exercise increased caution due to the high amounts of crime. Even though it's a beautiful place full of amazing food, beautiful architecture, and incredible people. But Mexico gets this bad rap and has this horrible reputation for being this dangerous place. We are here to tell you that Mexico City is a place you do not want to miss. So safety can involve with so many aspects, but aspects that we will talk about today include five aspects. Food, transportation, internet, and area location, and also in terms of health risk. So food, but when we first arrive in a new location, every time we get to a new location, we start out by asking the locals. Where are the places to go that you really like and you would suggest? And what we normally do all the time, no matter where we go, we just notice if a lot of locals eat there. When we took a food tour, we were asking, you know, the local that runs the food tour. The first thing we asked him was, how do we know that we're not going to get sick on this food tour? Oh, yeah. Places like this where they open at 2 p.m., they close at 3 a.m. on a weekend. They're busy from the time they open till the time they close. These places are not going to make you sick. Uh, there's a high turnover. Everything's really clean. When they're breaking down at the end of the day, there's a lot of soap involved in their clean up. And maybe the ones you want to watch out for are like risotto taco places where the stews are left out during casuela pots. And as the day goes on, things cool down and they're not reheated. So later in the afternoon, you might want to avoid those. But in general, the place is busy. The person making the food is not going to make the money. You're not going to be sick. Those are going to be good quality food places. You guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yes. All right. Sure. Remember his yeah. face, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from the all-inclusive food. And he continued to tell us that most of the time it comes from all-inclusive resorts or hotels that have food, mainly because they cook so much in the morning that it sits out all day and not enough people are there to eat all the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because like when we take the food tour, mainly it involves with the street food. And of course, like, Jimmy has a really weak stomach condition. Yeah. So that's why it's become the concern in terms of food safety. But because these street food, first of all, you see how they cook it. You see the way they cook it. It's just like high right in the in kitchen. Front of you. Yes. And secondly, because of the high turnover ratio of the street food, um, we would highly recommend you to not getting afraid of trying street food. Of course, in Mexico City, you will find street food almost every Everywhere. corner, yeah. <laughs> especially street taco. Taco like, paradise. So don't get afraid to try that. But if your stomach is really weak, just like Jimmy, what we would highly recommend also is to bring the charcoal peel with you. Yeah, I got sick in Asia. I got food poisoning right before a flight. And when I got on the flight, the flight attendant gave me a charcoal pill. Uh -huh. Within like two minutes, three minutes, I threw up everything in my body. But that's good because it cleans out all the toxins yeah. and the chemicals and like everything from my body and I felt amazing. So we never leave home without yeah. charcoal pills now. So you yeah. can pick them up just about anywhere. Just go to a pharmacy. They're very, very cheap. Next is internet security. Now for us, this is a huge thing because we're constantly on the internet, uploading, downloading. Mm. We're working from the computer every day. Yeah. And we didn't have the luxury of having fast internet in our apartment. Mm. So we are always at coffee shops. I actually heard about this story that uh, somebody can actually steal your information just by using the same Wi-Fi with you. They can get your bank account. They can get everything like you do not want people on your computer because your computer saves all the passwords. It saves your bank account information, your credit oh, yeah. cards when you're trying to type in the credit card number yeah. and you type in like the first three digits mm -hmm. and your computer remembers that credit oh, card number. Oh, that's so scary. Yeah. Imagine somebody logging on without you knowing because you're on an unsecure internet. So while we were out working on the computer at coffee shops, we always wanted to make sure that we were safe. So we would use the app called NordVPN. Thankfully, Nord sponsored this video and they gave us the option to stop people from tracking what we're doing online. And this is normally how hackers get your sensitive information. With all of our information on our computers from working and traveling around and downloading and buying things, 
it's super easy to avoid this. Just download NordVPN app, log in, and you're off. NordVPN, they never log any of your activity, so it's completely untraceable. And another benefit is that it will not slow down your internet. With us, that's basically the main thing we need, that and security. So if you guys are interested in this, check out the description box below and you can try NordVPN for free for seven days. <laughs> All right, the next topic in term of safety, we would like to cover the safety in term of transportation. And the reason why it's so important is because in Mexico City alone, it covers 1,700 or 1,700 neighborhoods, I think. So many people so in Mexico many, City. So many neighborhoods. And with 1,700 neighborhoods, you want to explore them. Yeah, you want to see as much as you can, but you want to get there safely yeah. while not breaking your bank. One thing that is really well known in Mexico City is that Uber is so cheap. It adds up quickly. <laughs> so for transportation, what we highly recommend you to do is actually take subway, but there is also the concern when it comes to taking subway as well. We always uh, take subway during the day and at night, night time, when it comes to like the rush hour, the peak hour. Which is normally from like 6 like to 8 in the morning. 6 to 8. Mm -hmm. And then like 5 to 7 at night. Yeah. So you want to avoid it at that time. The reason why you want to avoid taking subway when it's become a rush hour is because it's become so packed. Jam packed. And so crowded. So when it comes to the situation that you are in the place that is so crowned and so packed not only in Mexico City but anywhere. anywhere in this world it's easy to be targeted for pickpocketing there's there's this thing that happens where when it's like five o'clock and it's rush hour and everybody's jamming on the subway one big guy will push everybody in and then two people will start pickpocketing yeah. and we saw it it happened like it almost happened to me but what you can do to avoid this situation is take all your valuables out of your pockets. Put them in your backpack. Yeah, make it in the front. Yeah, and take the backpack and put it in the front. Yeah, this is the practice that a lot of Mexican local that take the subway during the rush hour does as well. If a local is doing it, do it. Follow along because they know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And also some area in Mexico City, for example, Socalo, like the historic center, that area is always crowded. So if you take the subway, you can expect to see that it's always crowded. But as we said, it's just like any big, major, mega city in any country in the world. It becomes easy for them at night when everybody's jam-packed because you won't feel them rubbing up against you or accidentally touching you. You just think yeah, it's yeah. something that's happening because there's so many people. So we'll take the subway during the day when we can see things. Yeah, it's... We're not so jam-packed. Yeah. And then late at night, we take Uber. Yeah. And Uber is very convenient because you can just get picked up where you want and you get dropped off at your door. Yeah. Next thing is the big concern because as I say earlier, it contains like 1,000 over 1,700 neighborhoods and you, you never, want to, You never know which one's good and which one's bad. Yeah, you want to go explore. Of course, there is the areas that you want to avoid and the areas that you can feel comfortable in. You want to do your research online, but yeah. then you also want to double check that research. Yeah, exactly. And ask a local. Yes. Because the locals are going to know best. Yeah. So what we do all the time, when we think that, okay, we want to go to this place because sometimes you guys like talk about some neighborhood or some area in the comment, we see that and then we just talk to our apartment mate again and see what they think. And it doesn't always have to be your apartment mate. You yeah. could literally go out to the grocery store and ask somebody at the grocery store. Or if you stay at the hotel, you can just ask the reception desk. You can just ask somebody who work at the hotel. You can ask anybody basically. So when we asked our landlord which area to avoid and then she actually so kind that she, she put up the, the area name in Google, Google yeah, map. She pulled up the map, showed yeah. us, you know, you, you could go here, but you, you know, just be careful here at these times yeah. because it gets very crowded. Yeah. And mainly it's not about like life or death. Mainly it's about just being in such a crowded, congested yeah. area 
that you're vulnerable to pickpocketing and things like that and scams. Some of the area that um, we are warned to avoid is including, for example, Tepito. Yeah. That one. It's where the black market is, like the, the witch, witch market. It is? Yeah. We went there. And of course we have our bags on the front of us and everything in our front pockets. You just always have to protect yourself and worry. Like when we were walking down through the group of people, one of the locals was like, watch your camera, watch your wallet, watch your pockets. And he was yelling it to us because you never know. You should always look behind you, keep an eye out for things that yeah. make you feel uncomfortable. But in these areas that they're suggesting, just be extra careful. Yeah, that's all. That's all matter. Like we still go there. Or for example, some people say that um, the la, the Mercado Merced. Yeah, Mercado Merced. Uh, the market. Yeah, the market. That one also is known for being pickpocket. Pickpocket. Yeah, but we still go there, and nothing happened because we are so careful. Um, we always put our. We even, bring, we even bring camera and things. Yeah, so. I always have my camera on me, but I always have the camera strapped around my hand or locked to my camera bag. Yeah. So it can't come off of me. Yeah. And then my valuables are always in my bag, so it can't come off of me. And the bag unzips from the back. So when it's on my back, uh -huh. nobody can unzip the bag from the front. Yeah. We, um, there are actually more. It's not only Tepito and Mercedes, but there are still more that we got one not to, not to go there. And... We put the link and the list of those area in the description box below. So if you are planning to visit Mexico City, you can also check them out as well. Now, we do suggest going to these places. They're, <laughs> so amazing. they're yeah. amazing. They're, yeah. they're incredible places that you definitely want to see, but you just need to be careful. Like nothing bad happened to us at all. Yeah. But then it comes to like you being so cautious about it. The last topic that we will cover today is about health risk we haven't really ran into many issues while traveling about air or altitude yeah. but we didn't really realize that mexico city was so high up over 7,000 7, feet above sea level yeah. which is pretty high yeah and one thing that happened to me outstanding thing that i realized happened to my body is that i get tired easily I thought it was just because we were walking so much, but <laughs> you actually do get tired a lot easier like, when you're high up. Yeah, even though we don't really do anything much, you know what I mean? Yeah, just it, like walking around, but it becomes like so noticeably. Noticeable. Yeah, noticeable. So this can cause many drastic side effects like altitude sickness, dizziness, you can get headaches, or you could just, you know, have less appetite and struggle sleeping like being high up in the altitude can cause many different side effects so just make sure you're aware of these side effects get a drink of water take some advil or take altitude rx um that we haven't taken it but we have heard that it helps a lot with the altitude sickness one thing that i realized in mexico city is that the air is so dry as well um my lip dry drastically in Mexico City and my skin's so dry at first I thought that is because it's getting so cold in Mexico City and then we went to have um, a meal with two of our friends the local friends there and then I told my problem to her and then she said that oh I got the same thing I was like is it normal to get it here and then she said that it's normal because the air in Mexico City is so dry yeah. and especially like when it comes to we stay in Mexico City during October, November she said that during that time it's like the, the, the temperature and the weather is so unpredictable like sometimes it's like getting so so cold and then becoming so hot you have to get ready for this Bring as well Bring lotion, chapstick, Advil, Altitude RX yeah. just be prepared for these things If you ask us that Mexico City is safe or not. Absolutely. I would say that Mexico City is safe. So as we said earlier, to put these things on a little different perspective, level two is advised the same to many tourist hotspots, including Belize, uh, UK, Dominican Republic, Brazil. There are certainly like things and places to avoid. Eventually it comes to your concern of like, take care of your 
valuable your belongings is it just your your role and your responsibility of yeah. your belongings and if things. you're gonna walk around with an eight hundred dollar camera you better be ready to make sure you can hold on to it exactly, <laughs> exactly. be concerned be cautious but do not let it ruin your trip so we hope this video is helpful to anybody that's looking to travel Mexico City or is, has traveled Mexico City and is going back or is even thinking about it. We hope this video is helpful to you guys and it can give you some insight on things to, you know, stay cautious about how to be prepared.